everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. So New York Republican Representative John Katko has now announced that he will support the impeachment of President Donald Trump. Katko is the first Republican in the House to formally and publicly announce that he will support the removal of Donald Trump from the White House. And this comes, of course, after House Democrats revealed their articles of impeachment, which includes just one item, which was incitement of insurrection. Now, of course, it has to clear the Senate where it doesn't have much chance because Republicans, as of right now, still hold a majority, even after McConnell is out as the leader of the Senate and even after the new Senate has has been seated and it is a tie. Um, it still takes a two thirds majority to impeach and remove Donald Trump, which means that they would have to have close to 20 Republican senators who agree with Democrats on this issue. And I don't think there's any way under the sun that they're going to do that. And the, the reason is because they all care about politics. They don't, they've proven for four years, they don't care about this country. They don't care about democracy. They don't care about the constitution. They only care about their own power. And they're looking at these polls, which still show that a majority of the Republican base is with Donald Trump. The majority of the Republican base, even after all of this, even after all these videos have come out, they've seen the so-called Blue Lives Matter supporters and back the blue people beating police officers, murdering one after hitting him over the head. And they still think that Donald Trump was right, that the election was stolen, and the majority feel that this was justified, what took place last week. What these polls don't tell you is how many Republicans have left the party. So yes, a majority supports Donald Trump still, but your overall numbers have shrunk. So here's an example. If you had 100 people in a party and 10 of them supported Donald Trump, you, now, you have 10% support and that equals 10 people. But if 90 people leave the group and now you only have 10 people in that group, and one person supports Donald Trump, that's still 10%. But now it's one person versus 10. You've now lost actually 90 people because they didn't like what you stood for. So if you're only looking at the top line numbers, if you're only looking at a percentage of the base, of what's left of the base, it's skewed. You're not getting realistic numbers. I would like to see how many people, not a percentage, I would like to know how many, what's the number of people who support him in the country. We know on election day, there was a certain number. We also know that since election day, his approval rating has been in the ditch. It had a small bump and now it's at the lowest level that it's ever been. And there's reports coming out of several states saying that even since last week's terrorist attack on the Capitol, people have been leaving the Republican Party in droves. So to look at percentages, as I said, it's an, it's an unrealistic, skewed number. So I hope that more people will follow suit. CatCo released a statement saying, quote, to allow the President of the United States to incite this attack without consequence is a direct threat to the future of our democracy. For that reason, I cannot sit by without taking action. I will vote to impeach this president. It cannot be ignored that President Trump encouraged this insurrection, both on social media ahead of January 6th and in his speech that day, by deliberately promoting baseless theories suggesting the election was somehow stolen the president created a combustible environment of misinformation, disenfranchisement, and division. When this manifested in violent acts on January 6th, he refused to promptly and forcefully call it off, 
putting countless lives in danger. Yeah, he's right. And not only that, he didn't just not call it off. He refused to send help. People were calling him. They were begging to send the National Guard, and he refused. It took them 90 minutes to get people over there. In addition to the, the issues with the polls that I mentioned, I also don't think that they're taking this recent election in Georgia into consideration. After the November election, after the, the presidential election, after Democrats lost seats in the House, Republicans obviously picked up some seats and then they held on to the, to the Senate temporarily. There was a sentiment going around Washington from everything I've read and interviews that I've watched that Republicans felt that they had been given a mandate, that they had been basically and essentially told, we like what you're doing. Keep doing that. Keep obstructing Democrats. We don't like Trump necessarily. We don't necessarily want him in charge of the country and the party. We have issues with him, but we don't want to hand complete control over to the Democrats. However, the tide shifted. After Trump lost the election, the people who were still willing to vote for Republicans down ballot, the people who split their tickets, who voted for down ballot Republicans, but voted for Biden at the top of that ticket, they saw how Trump acted. They saw his lies and how he continued to push these, this misinformation and these conspiracy theories about having the election stolen from him. They saw what a bad loser he was, that he refused to concede, and they didn't like it. And if you don't believe me, go look at the Twitter account, Trump Regrets. Go look at the YouTube channel, Republican Voters Against Trump, where people were saying, get over it. Enough. People concede and we move on. This has gone on long enough. He lost like 60 court cases. They never presented evidence of this so-called fraud. And so people were done. And so I think the people in Georgia, especially, they either decided not to go out and vote because we know that their participation was down. It drove up Democratic voting. And there were Republicans who voted in Georgia. I saw one of them interviewed on TV who said, I'm a lifelong Republican, never voted Democrat, and I'm voting Democrat right now in this month's special election. It turned a lot of people off. And I don't think they're reading the room. I think that they still believe they have the same support that they did in November. They still have the same mandate and the same number of people support them today as a couple of months ago. Because in their mind, what has happened? What's changed? Trump hasn't done anything wrong in so many of their minds. They don't get it. They just don't get it. Just like Democrats didn't get it when Hillary lost, <laughs> didn't truly understand why people felt disenfranchised and were so pissed off and so willing to go from voting for Bernie to staying home or voting third party or even for Trump and felt pissed off at the establishment for the games that they played. I think that the Republicans now are in that same position. They just don't get it. They're not reading the room. Anyway, guys, I'll let you know if anybody else comes forward. This is good news. It always takes one or two or three, especially to break the dam and then others feel emboldened and come forward because people by by nature, they don't want to be the first one or the first few. <laughs> so it's the reason why people show up late to parties. Anyway, as always, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching and listening. Talk with you soon. Take care.